Hey everyone, my name is Kevin and today I'm here in Volunteer Park in Seattle, Washington. And I've got Tara with me. Hi guys, I'm Tara Brown and uh, Kevin helped me get started on my YouTube channel. You can see that in the description. That's right. And so what we're going to be doing today is I've had a lot of you ask me for how do you film with multiple cameras and then how do you edit multiple cameras. So today we're going to look at how to do that and I have multiple cameras with me. I've got my phone, I've got a GoPro and I also have a drone and I'm going to show you step by step how you first off record all your video but then how you bring it all together and edit your video so you have an awesome shot to look like something like this. I figured to use multiple cameras, it's the most fun if you do an action sequence. So I'm at Volunteer Park in Seattle. We're here on a tennis court and I don't have a tennis racket. So I thought what could be fun is if I try to jump over the tennis net. Now I haven't done this in a long time. It's a little slippery today. So uh, hopefully everything works according to plan and I make it over the net and we get a cool action sequence. If I don't post a video in a while, it might be because I got injured. One of the first cameras, this video is a great excuse to use my drone. So we're gonna take off the drone here. This is camera number one. We gotta get that up in the air. All right, and here I have my Sony. I'm gonna use this get, to get the core of the action. Let's go check out some of the other cameras. All right, and what would an action sequence be without a GoPro? So I've got a GoPro right here and we're gonna use that to catch some of the action too. I might even set the frame rate a little higher so we can get some slow-mo action. And then I have Tara, who's gonna capture the moving shot and hopefully not me falling down on the ground. I really hope not either. Yeah. I'm just a little concerned about these old knees that he's got and the slickness of the tennis court. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I hope he's a good hurdler. I made it. My knees are still intact. Now that I jumped successfully, we're gonna take these uh, this action sequence on each of these cameras. We're gonna bring it back to the studio and I'll show you how you can edit them and bring them all together. Hey, I'm back here in my studio and I got some awesome footage out there with Tara on the tennis courts at Volunteer Park. Just as a quick recap of what I did is, so I had four different cameras out there. I had my GoPro that captured some footage. I also had my drone up in the sky. I had my iPhone 11 Pro Max. And then I also had the camera that I'm recording this video on. I had four different cameras and they all captured the same action sequence. So essentially all cameras were recording the same thing all from different angles. And now what I can do is I could put together an action sequence and I could switch between those camera angles. So I could choose which angle I like the most for different sections of that sequence. Uh, it actually results in a pretty nice outcome. And what you could do is not only do you, can you use this for action sequences, but I use this a lot uh, just for my tech tutorials where I have my main camera, I have my screen capture, I might have another camera, and then I could switch between those different views. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how you do that. Uh, and I think you'll get a pretty nice video. But to do this, why don't we jump on the PC? Here I am on my PC and what I've done is I've already taken the video output from the four different cameras and I've imported them onto my computer. Uh, so here I am in File Explorer and you see my drone footage, here I have my GoPro footage, my iPhone footage, and my Sony footage. So I have four different video clips and what I wanna do now is I wanna bring them into my video editing software. So what I would do is I would select those four and then pull it into my video editing software. Uh, and I happen to be using Corel Video Studio uh, to do my multi-cam editing. Now you can do this whether you have uh, Adobe Premiere, if you're using CyberLink, PowerDirector, Corel Video Studio, any of these uh, softwares support multi-cam editing. If you're looking for video editing software that can do this, all you have to do is make sure to look for multi-cam uh, or the multi-cam capability. So what I've done is I've inserted these four different video clips into my video editing software. And then what I can do is I can simply highlight the four of them. This is in Corel Video Studio and right click on it and then there's an option called multi-camera editor. This makes it very easy uh, to edit these video files. So what I would do is I would click on that. I've actually already done that. So I'm gonna click into my action sequence here. Here I am in the multi-cam editor and what you could do is you see the four different video clips that I inserted. Now the nice thing about this multi-cam editor is uh, I'll show you a few different capabilities that you have in here. So here I can click on the camera number that I wanna use. You could either do two cameras, four, 
or six cameras. In this case, I was using four cameras, so I just have four cameras selected. It keeps my timeline down here a little cleaner just having the four cameras. And then here what I could do is along with cameras, I could also have audio tracks that I synchronize as well. So I have the four audio tracks. Now what you could do is uh, I need to synchronize the different video files. So here if I'll pull it out here, uh, you could see the four different files all side by side. And so what I could do is I could synchronize based on the audio. And so uh, I'll show a quick example of how this works. But if I zoom in on the video clip here and I click on the soundtrack, so here I could see the, uh, the waveform. What you'll notice is each one of these audio tracks in the different video files has a hump at the same exact point. And so what Video Studio will do is it'll look for similarities in the waveform and then it'll align the tracks that way automatically. So I could just click on this sync button and it'll line up the clips. What you could also do is you could select an area. So let's say your video file uh, audio doesn't align say at the beginning of the clip but then it does later in the clip. What you could do is you could simply highlight the portion uh, where the audio was the same and then you could synchronize uh, based just on that section. You could also use markers and shooting date and time. Um, I typically use audio or selected area. Now this video was a little trickier because camera two, you see there is no waveform here. That's my drone. My drone doesn't capture any audio. And what I needed to do then is I needed to align the video. And so the, I'll show you how I did that. Um, I used a, video, a visual cue to be able to align that clip. So if I go back here, what I did is here on the clip, um, I see on the drone footage that my foot is going over the net right at this point. And so what I did is I already had my three other files all aligned and here too in this clip, I see that my foot is just going over the net. Um, so what I did is I moved the clip so they both occurred in that same position. And then here I aligned that and now all four clips are in alignment. I aligned three of them based on audio and then one of them just based on the visual cue. And so what I could do is I've already gone through and I've chosen which clip I want to use where, but I'll show a quick example of um, how you could go through and how easy it is to choose your video footage. So what I could do now is I'll simply play the video and then I could click the number on my keypad for the video that I want to play. So there I just did a quick sequence where I go from camera one to camera three to camera two to camera one. So it's really simple to switch between your cameras. Um, it's as easy as just clicking a number on the keyboard. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll show you the action sequence that I ended up doing. Um, so here I start running and then I switch over to the overhead shot and right at that point I come into the frame where you see me overhead running and then I launch into the jump and check out that. That's pretty good height right there. I think I might've had a career in the NBA if I, um, if I tried hard, I have some good ups there. <laughs> just kidding. Um, and then it kind of as I go on there, I kind of come down for the landing and then we switch to the GoPro where you kind of get the landing and the expression. And then we go back to the iPhone where I kind of do my uh, end commentary. So that's how I set up my little action sequence. Uh, and what I'm going to do is all of this looks good. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to click on OK. I'm back on the main editor screen and then I have this action sequence which is the edited version of that sequence that I just did and what I'll do is I'll drag that down onto my timeline and what that'll do is that'll insert the edited uh, video file right down here and so let me play it in real time so you can see what this looks like. So there I'm going to run, there I jump and I land. Now one of the things is it's a pretty quick sequence of action. It all occurs in about five seconds jumping over a net. Um, so what I might want to do is here, maybe I'm going to cut uh, right before the end commentary starts. So I'm just going to cut the audio there and maybe I'll just delete the audio for the first part. And then for this clip where I'm coming in for the landing, I'm just going to go ahead and slow this down. I did 60 frames per second, so I'll cut the time in about half. Uh, so that way the sequence goes on for a little bit longer. And then for my jump over the net, um, I recorded this at 30 frames per second, but I'm just going to go ahead and slow that down as well um, just to extend uh, the action. And here I'm going to align the audio with that video. Um, and so now what we could do is I've added a little bit of slow-mo. So here I go in for the run, you see the beginning of the jump, and then it kind of slows it down as I do the jump. So it gives a little more emphasis uh, to this action sequence, which is kind of neat. Um, and what I could do to really kind of drop a big impact, I could even throw in some music here. So I'm just going to go ahead, uh, throw in this uh, action hero song. Uh, the song goes on a lot longer than the sequence. So I'm just going to kind of drag it over to here. Uh, let's do it right before my commentary starts. I'll have it fade out. 
Uh, and now what we'll do is let's watch the clip again and now you can see it uh, with the music in there. So it kind of makes it a little more intense. <laughs> You made, I made it. it! I made it. <laughs> I thought I might go down, but glad it worked out. These, these legs still have some spring in them. That's how you can take footage from multiple cameras and then edit them together into a nice action sequence. And with that, we're gonna jump right back out to the tennis courts. Well, hey, thanks everyone. So that's, that was just a quick tutorial of how you could film using multiple cameras and how you could edit it so you get an awesome edit. If you were able to use this video and you can now edit multiple cameras as well, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. And hey, if you have any other ideas that you wanna see me cover in the future, leave a comment down below and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right, well, thanks a lot. That's all I had. See you next time. Bye.